to the River of Wars program. I'm Alana Adams here at the Art Center of Coastal Carolina and I'm so glad that you're joining us for today's project. In each one of these River of Wars lessons, we're going to have fun creating an original artwork while we learn about the plants, animals, and unique characteristics of our watershed here in the low country of South Carolina. For today's lesson, we're going to learn about some of the different habitats that we have along the shoreline and we're going to create a crayon engraving of one of the habitats that we choose. Today's lesson can be found in a PDF that you can download that's accompanying this video and you can follow along with that. In the back of the lesson plan packet, there is an appendix that will have lots of different visual images and things for you to use as you're working with your lesson. Or you can just follow along with me today and I'll show you everything you need to know to get the project done. Let's get started. For today's project, you're gonna need the following materials. Since we're working with habitats, you'll want a photograph to work from. That can be one of the habitats that are found in our watershed. You could have a shoreline like the sand dunes where different plants and animals live. You might choose a picture from one of the deep rivers or streams that we have here in Beaufort County. Somewhere along the back edge of an island where the salt marsh mixes with the uh, river or the ocean water. We also have all kinds of maritime forests. So you're going to do a little bit of research and look around and find a picture of one of these habitats that you want to work with. The plants and animals that live in each one of these little areas is going to be different. You're also going to want a piece of 8 by 10 newsprint paper or just thin sketch paper. A piece of 8 by 10 paper that's heavier. For this one, I'm using cardstock, and this is going to be the paper that we make our art project on. You'll want a pencil for sketching, a piece of white chalk for transferring, and because we're working with an engraving technique, you'll want some plastic or wood implements that you can scratch away with. So I've got a skewer, some disposable chopsticks, a popsicle stick, and also a plastic fork that I'll experiment with for textures today. And then you're going to need some crayons for our crayon engraving. For the top of the crayon engraving, you're gonna want a black surface, and you can either choose to do this with just a black crayon, if that's what you've got on hand, or you can make your black surface with a mixture of temper paint with just a little squirt of dish soap or liquid soap in it, and you're just gonna to wanna to mix that up well. Your ratio is one tablespoon of soap for every pint of paint, but if you're working individually, you can just put a small squirt into your little cup of paint and give it a good stir. So once you choose an image, we are going to be sketching the image onto the newsprint. I am going to look through my images here. Uh, I've got where a, a waterway, a small waterway that looks like maybe a tidal creek is dumping into the sound or the ocean and I've got a nice big palmetto palm there. I have got a picture of one of the larger rivers. Uh, it looks like maybe the May River here in Beaufort County. Uh, with a shrimp boat coming in to choose from and I've also got a picture of the sand dunes to choose from. So you want to pick something that has a background, a middle ground, and a foreground, some different interesting things going on that's going to make your picture a lot more interesting. The artwork that we're making is called a crayon engraving and so we're going to be filling our paper with an assortment of different crayon colors covering it with black and then scratching through or engraving black, uh, back through the black surface to draw our picture. So the more details and the more items and different types of plants and animals that you have in your picture, the more interest in the composition is going to be in the end. So I am going to go ahead and choose to work with this one. I like the palm tree that I've got there, one of our cabbage palms, which is our uh, palmetto palm, our state tree. And you're going to take your paper that's just your kind of scratch paper, or your sketch paper, and you're going to sketch out the habitat that you've chosen. You'll do a little research and find out all the plants and the animals that live in your habitat before you get going with the project. It's important that you fill the whole space right now as you're doing your sketch because we want it to be really interesting and good compositions oftentimes have the picture covering at least three sides of the paper. So in my photograph, I can see that the palm tree is cropped. I'm gonna do it the same way here in my sketch. Again, this is just a sketch that we're gonna be tracing to get our design onto our crayon etching. 
So I am just going to put in big broad shapes. I'm gonna find my horizon line, which is where my sky meets the ground. And I'm gonna sketch that uh, going from left to right there. And I will add in some of the details that I see. Now, because I have got some rocks here in the corner, I'm just gonna kind of sketch the shape of that rock pile in. And then I don't have to draw every single detail on the rocks right now, but I'm just gonna draw some of the rock shapes in my rock pile. I see a piece of driftwood here that is laying up in the rock pile. I'm gonna go ahead and sketch that in as well. And some of the details that I have on the tree. I noticed that along the tree trunk, there are these bits where the old palm fronds were, and as they fall off and shed, they leave the little stub behind. So I'm gonna sketch in some of those and make sure that when I'm transferring my tree that it's got sort of a jagged edge and not a smooth edge because I can notice that bit of detail with my eyes as I'm making my observations. If you have any plants or animals, of course mine just has plants. I don't see any animals in my picture, but I might even use my imagination and add in some of the animals that would live in that habitat as well. So think to yourself, what kind of animals would live here where this little tidal creek is dumping into the ocean? I can imagine there's probably some oyster beds along the edge here and I might sketch in some of those. There might be some little raccoons going down to the edge of the water to eat the oysters. We find raccoons a lot in the tidal zones as they go down at the low tide and eat the oysters. There might be some different kinds of birds that I research and find out that come in to eat the fiddler crabs when the tide gets low. Lots of animals come to eat at low tide. It exposes all different sorts of little animals that are covered up during our high tide. So I am just giving a broad sketch here. I'm not putting every branch on every tree, but I do definitely want to block in where my boats are or my trees or my crabs, any plants or animals that are in the habitat that I chose. So if you chose a picture of the beach, where the sand dunes are, you would definitely find different plants and animals living there than you would over in the maritime forest, let's just say. So I've sketched in a basic kind of outline of where the trees are, where the water line is, and I'm gonna sketch in where the back side of this little waterway is. And many of these other details I'm gonna capture as I'm uh, doing my engraving as I'm scratching my picture and I uh, don't really have to put those in the picture right now. I just want where my basic landforms meet one another and where my animals might be placed within the picture if there are any of them in the picture. So when I'm all finished, I'm going to take the 8 by 10 heavier paper. This could be like poster board or cardstock. And my job is to fill the whole paper with crayon. It is not important that you draw a picture right now. In fact, you don't really want to draw a picture. What you want to do right now is just make it random. So we are going to start with any color that you want. Uh, you might want to sort of make it like a rainbow and do your Roy G. Bib in that order. Uh, I'm starting with some orange in the corner here. And then I might move into sort of a stripe of some pink. You just want to use a whole variety of colors. All of the colors in the rainbow that you like, you can add now. I really love this pretty um, sort of turquoise blue color. I'm going to put some of that in. I've just sort of got some stripes going here. You might want to make concentric circles. That means you draw one circle and then you put a circle around it of a different color. And then you put a circle around that of a different color and it gets larger and larger and larger. You might want to make geometric designs if you're studying different geometric shapes such as trapezoids. Uh, you may want to divide your paper into those sorts of shapes and color it in that way. But your job right now is to push really hard and to put a lot of crayon on this paper 
and fill in the entire piece of paper with the wax colored pigment from your crayon with no particular design. Again, it's just some geometric shapes or you could do wavy lines or make a big giant rainbow. Uh, it's totally up to you. You are the artist right now and can make those choices. I've got my lines in the corner. Now I'm gonna make some almost like sun rays coming out from that that are gonna be in an assortment of colors here. Maybe I'm going to use um, suddenly lots of my sort of aquatic or cool colors. I might make a blue and turquoise pattern here. And then maybe toward the bottom of the paper, I might use more warm colors. It is totally up to you. So go ahead, I'm gonna pause the video here as I get the paper filled in. And you're gonna do the same thing. And once your whole eight by 10 paper is filled up with your wax crayon and your designs, I want you to come back and join me here. Okay, so now I have filled in my entire eight by 10 paper with a variety of designs made by pushing really, really hard with my crayons. Again, I've just filled in the background and made sure that all the white spots are filled. You don't want white spots on here because then your design won't show up as interesting. So I have all of my colors in the background and now what I'm gonna do is cover it with black and you have two choices. If you just have crayons, you can take a black crayon and cover on top of your whole picture by pushing hard with your black crayon. You wanna cover all of that beautiful handiwork and designs that you've made underneath so that it's completely black. The other choice, and if you have it on hand, the one that I recommend is to cover it with black paint. So what I've done is taken some black tempera paint or poster paint, and I've got probably about three tablespoons of it here in my little plastic cup, and I just added one squirt of liquid hand soap or dish detergent. If you're doing a whole pint for a classroom, you can add about a tablespoon to the pint, but it doesn't have to be an exact science. Adding that soap to the paint is gonna make it not flake as bad and make it more stick to the surface underneath. So I've got my little paintbrush and what I'm gonna do is with my black temper paint, I'm gonna cover the entire paper. You wanna make sure that you just kind of work in one direction here. So I am working the long way on my paper. You don't wanna scrub back and forth too much. We're really just laying the paint on top of the crayon and because black is such a dark color, it really only takes one coat. So you just wanna make sure you're not scrubbing all around or you're gonna end up wiping paint back off areas that you've already added paint. I'm making sure I go all the way to my edges though. And as I see that the paint's getting a little thin on my brush, I can just dip back in and get a little bit more and work with one layer. You wanna to try to make this as even as possible so that every area of the paper really just has one layer of the paint. It works better if there aren't some areas that are super thick and some really thin. As I'm going along, I'm just not pushing too hard with my brush. I'm laying the paint on top of the surface by just gently pulling my brush. You wanna keep doing this until you've covered the whole paper with black paint. You can see here that I'm about two thirds of the way finished. And after you are finished covering the whole surface with black paint, you're just gonna let it dry completely. You can either do that by letting it air dry or you could even take a hair dryer with the temperature kind of on cool and blast it to get that process to go along faster. But absolutely make sure that this paint is completely dry before we move forward with transferring our picture and then doing the really fun etching process. Okay, so I have given an opportunity for the black temper paint to dry on top of my crayon. It's completely black and opaque. You can't see any of the crayon showing through. And now it's time to transfer my habitat onto the black paper so that I can start my etching or engraving to make my picture. So if you've got a white piece of chalk, one really easy way to transfer your design is to take your sheet of newsprint that has your sketch on it and cover the back with white chalk. 
This is going to work kind of like old-fashioned uh, transfer paper would or carbon paper. So you might even have some transfer paper that's in white around the studio. You could certainly use that. But another way to do that is just to coat the back of the paper completely with black chalk. And then when you put it down and you start tracing it, the white chalk from the back is going to press into the black and make your design show up there. Again, we're just trying to transfer the basic sketch um, onto the black paper. We don't have to get all of the details right now because we can do that later as we are etching or scratching our design through the black paint to reveal that beautiful, colorful background that we have in the background. If you don't have a piece of white chalk, another thing that you can do is just use this as a reference as you're going. Again, we wanted to make sure that our habitat was covering at least three or touching at least three sides of the page to make an interesting composition. And you can go ahead and start sketching. Uh, you want to first start sketching your design if you're doing it this way with something really skinny like a toothpick or I've got a skewer stick here because we want to make a really soft thin line. As we are putting pressure and dragging through the black paint, it's going to remove the black paint, revealing the colorful designs underneath. We're really working with line and texture here, not so much with color because it's just going to be whatever color it is underneath, which is going to be a great big surprise. So if you want to, you can even practice in the corner or you can make a second piece where you practice doing some different types of thin lines and thick lines. But as you can imagine, a popsicle stick dragging across the paint is gonna make a thicker line than something really fine uh, like a skewer here or a toothpick if you've got that. You can experiment with plastic utensils as well, whatever you like. So I am going to start sketching my design right here onto my black paper. Uh, I can use my reference photo as well if I want. Uh, and I really want to make sure that I get this large. The foreground is what's closest to you. And for me, it's this big palmetto tree here. So I'm gonna start very softly with my popsicle stick, looking at the contour edge, the outer edge of that tree. Remember, I was noticing how every time the palm fronds fall off, they leave that little bit behind that ends up making the texture. And as I'm scratching very softly through, I can come back and commit these lines later with even more texture and press even harder. I can make the lines even wider later as I go. But right now, uh, I want you to start with your foreground and you're scratching in your shapes. If you've colored the back with white chalk, you can lay this on top and you can trace it with your pencil and it's gonna leave behind a white chalk line wherever your design was. So either way is fine, and we are working to get the foreground done. I can show you here, um, maybe you'll be able to see how I'm very softly making my lines, my sketches here. I can go back later and decide which ones need to be thick or thin. As we look at our elements of art, uh, and we're thinking about which ones that we're really able to use here. Uh, again, line is one that we're able to use as well as shape and texture. I really want you to think about texture. You can use um, small cross hatching or stippling effect and different things with your tool. You can um, really get a lot of different fun effects in there with that. But we're mainly making a basic line drawing right now of our habitat. Again, mine is where I've got this tidal creek and it's dumping into the ocean and I am scratching through and as I'm dragging my sharp tool across the black paint, it's removing it and revealing that rainbow effect underneath. I'm going to go ahead and sketch in my horizon line here. And for my trees, instead of worrying about every single little bit of the palm frond, I'm just going to use kind of a zigzag effect to represent the prickly texture of this, especially the one, there's one kind of in the middle ground here in my picture that's much smaller. This palm is much smaller than the one in the foreground. I don't have to uh, pay as much attention to uh, exact detail with that. I just want to capture the fact that it's kind of prickly along the edges and so I'm scratching that in. So you are going to take some time and transfer your whole sketch. If you've got the plants and the animals that are in 
that particular habitat, you can put them in there. Again, here is an example of one uh, with some sim similar elements to the one I'm making now. It's got a palm tree with a bird. Um, I see some uh, snakes in the bushes in this one. Again, we talked about raccoons and other animals. You might be making one that is an ocean habitat. And in your lesson plan, you can see one that's a nice example with some sea turtles and jellyfish and things like that. As you look through the packet, there's lots more inspiration there for you to have a look at of different ways that you can do this. So take a few minutes now and go ahead and scratch through. We're just kind of, the first thing we're doing again is sketching with our toothpick or our skewer to get the basic uh, layout of where things are at in our picture. And then you can go back and add more and more texture and detail experimenting with uh, your chopsticks have uh, sort of a broad end and that's gonna make a much wider line if you want. Uh, you can take the tip of a little skewer and just do little polka dots or a little, again, cross hatching where lines will go one way and then another way. So uh, play around with lots of different textures and uh, get your picture etched or engraved here. Uh, that word etching uh, is oftentimes used when we're talking about printmaking, but it's when you're just scratching through a surface to make your design, which is deeper or below the, the top surface uh, that we're working with. So once you get everything all sketched out, we'll look at some base ways that you can go back and add some more color to the top or more interest uh, to your pictures to put the final touches on them. Okay, so now I've used my variety of tools to etch or scratch back through the black paint to reveal my landscape, my habitat here. And I just wanted to show you an optional thing that you might want to do to finish it off with. Of course, you can always stop here with your engraving as long as you have a variety of thin lines and thick lines and textures. You may be happy with it just the way it is. But another thing that you can do is to experiment with going back on top of your engraving or your etching and adding oil pastel to the black areas. You want to make sure that if you're doing this technique that you don't go back and hit the areas where the rainbow effect of the crayon is underneath. But you could, for example, say, I want to make my sky, which is what's above my horizon line there, um, really delineated or different than uh, the, what I see going on with the waterway. You can go back and very, very carefully, you can add to the black some oil pastel. So oil pastel happens to show up really well on a black surface. It's nice and it's opaque. I've got this kind of seafoam green here that I'm using. And I want to really make sure I don't get too close to those areas that I had scratched through with the crayon. And this is gonna give me a third layer of detail. So I'm gonna have the scratch through crayon, which is gonna be kind of haloed with the black paint. And then the space around that is going to be filled in with the oil pastel. Oil pastels also blend well. So once I get this seafoam kind of green color on here, I want my sky to be lighter than my waterways and my ground for my particular picture. If you're doing one that's, let's just say an underwater habitat, you may you know, choose more of an aquatic looking blue color, but most of our waterways here in South Carolina don't have that beautiful turquoise blue look, right? They're mostly kind of brown and dark green, but you can already see where I'm adding in my oil pastel it's giving it some really nice contrast with the black. So I am going to use this color for the sky area only where I am just filling in some of these broad black spaces. And then when I get to the area where my rocks or my waterway is, I will choose another color. But it's important that you make sure that you leave some of that black showing because that's what's really creating this sort of outline and engraved effect in the picture. So now that I've got the sky done with my light color, I'm gonna go back with a little darker of a blue 
and I'm going to kind of hint at areas where my waterways were and again I'm leaving some black around the scratched I'm just sort of filling in some areas that are broad black spaces where my little river was there and then where my ocean was on the horizon there as well and I'm gonna go back with a green I think I'm gonna pick this really bright uh, green and the area where the little plants were growing all in the soil there around the tree I'm gonna hit with this green and again that just kind of helps sometimes the pictures uh, don't benefit from it at all and you've done a really good job with your engraving and you just want to kind of stop there uh, but sometimes people like to go back and add this extra layer of color on there and so I'll show you uh, here where I'm adding my my bright green to that it really just what we're playing around here is with the contrast between our really bright colors and the stark black of the paint or the crayon that you had in the foreground and if you use crayon for the top coat you can still go back with the oil pastel it will go on top of crayon as well it's a pretty a thick opaque sort of medium that sticks to lots of different types of surfaces underneath so once you have added in any additional details with your oil pastel that you want you are all finished with your crayon engraving of your habitat uh, hopefully you've included some plants or animals uh, that live in that area that you've chosen we've got such a delicate balance here between the beaches and the salt marshes and the maritime forest and such a wide variety of plants and animals that live here near our watershed in the low country so when you're all finished you can give your best artist signature down in the corner or on the back if it's hard to see because it's black I hope that you've enjoyed today's lesson and learning a little bit about a new art technique called crayon engraving or crayon etching. And I hope that you'll join us for one of these other River of Words videos. See you soon. Bye-bye.